This is from RefMap Performance and today I'm going to show you how to use a search engine to find your wiring diagram and be able to swap a 2.5 engine into your 2 liter turbo chassis. The reason I make this video is because I love people have been uh, reaching out and asking me for help with their swap and the wiring part and this is a very time consuming process as it is very specific to the year, the make and the engine code of your car. And I don't have the time to look for it uh, for everyone due to the large scale of people that I have to deal with. So instead of always making the search for you, I'm just going to show you how to do it from scratch so you will gain a better understanding of the swap and be able to do it on your own without being reliant on my help. So first of all, go to a search engine such as Google. I'm going to put it in English so you will have a better time to uh, understand what's going on and you're going to search for Elsa online it's going to lead you to a website called Nisky and then you can go in the menu select Mitchell on demand this will give you access to ProDemand sorry I'm going to switch to language now you can click for start select your car for this example somebody asked me about a uh, Tiguan 2009 uh, which is for motion then you can go into the wiring diagram and you have the engine performance and this would be the wiring diagram of your engine control unit and if you need the 2.5 you can go on the wiki scroll down wiring diagrams CBTA that would be your engine code and now you have access to the wiring diagram of the 2.5 engine and the 2 liter turbo. Now what you have to look for is the T94 connector. You have two connectors on the uh, engine control unit. You have the T60 which has 60 pins and the T94. The T60 is the engine harness so this is coming from the 2.5 engine. You don't have to make any change on the T60. The connector that interests us is the T94. It's exactly the same connector. The change that you have to make is the pinout. For example, I have some wires on pin 56, 57 on the 2.5. But if I look on the 2 liter, I'm missing the wires on those pins. So what this tells me is that the pinout is slightly different. There are about 8 to 12 wires that you need to move to match the pinout of the 2.5. Now. What I would advise you to do is to make an Excel sheet or a list and on this list you're going to put everything that is not related to the engine itself but that you need to drive the engine. Uh, so the brake light switch, clutch switch, the leak detection pump from, for the EVAP, the uh, oxygen sensor, the accelerator pedal, th those are all components that you need to drive your 2.5 engine and they belong to the chassis, so they would be on the T94 connector. Now there's a simplify wiring diagram from Emil that I'm going to share with you. On this diagram, you can see all the components that needs to be, the pinout needs to be changed. For, for example, here we have the oxygen sensor, then we've got the accelerator pedal, OB2 port, the injectors, the uh, camshaft solenoid, uh, ignition cone, fuel pump relay, um, and if we look here at the oxygen sensor, we've got the pin 56. Um, so here 56 is for the uh, wide band or the upstream oxygen sensor, which we are missing on the 2 liter. So if you plug it directly with your original harness on the 2.5 SU, you're going to be missing the oxygen sensor. That's why you have to move the wires and match the pin out. Once you have done this, you have two more steps to do and you're done with the wiring part. And I swear this takes about two to three hours if it's your first time. It's very easy to do. So if we look in the 2.5 wiring diagram, let's find the injectors. There you go. So five injectors, one, two, three, four, five. And what we see is that they have a 12 volt that is shared among all the injectors. And if we look at the wiring diagram of the 2 liter turbo from the 
stick one. <coughs> you can see that the injectors they don't share a 12 volt. The 12 volt is all coming from the engine control unit. And the reason for that is this is direct injection, so the SU is driving the injectors on both sides. And on a ported injection, like the 2.5 engine, the SU only controls the injectors uh, by using the ground. This wire is missing. The T14A connector, pin 8, um, this is on your body harness, so this is the same harness that you are using with the 2 liter uh, engine management. You will have to feed a 12 volt on pin 8, and that 12 volt is going to supply power to your, your injectors. Now, the last step that you need to do is to get rid of the fuel pump control module. I'm going to show you why. Still on the 2.5 uh, wiring or, uh, diagram, um, we have our fuel pump relay right here and we can see that the relay is going to feed our fuel pump and also feed uh, the injectors. So the SU only have the capability to drive a relay and if we look at the, the 2 liter instead of a relay we have a control module. The difference between the two is that the fuel pump relay is on or off and the control module will be able to use a duty cycle to drive a fuel pump and the 2.5 engine control unit is now able to talk with a control module. Uh, and to make the swap easier, I would keep the control module but only bypass the power for the fuel pump and the reason I would do that is because the fuel pump control module communicate with your fuel level sensor. So if you get rid completely of the fuel pump control module, you will need to make sure that your pinout is the proper one, otherwise you will uh, short your instrument luster. And I have seen some people do it. They mess the wiring for the fuel level sensor and they kill the gauges on their uh, instrument luster. So for this reason, to make it simpler, I would keep the fuel pump control module and you simply bypass the ground and the 12 volt for the fuel pump. So the fuel pump is driven by a relay that you would install on the back of the car. So the goal here is to use a relay instead of a fuel pump control module to drive your fuel pump. <clears throat> and now the signal for the fuel pump relay, how to send the signal to the back of the car. You don't need to fish a wire from the front end to the back end of the car. A simple, simple solution for that. If we look at the fuel pump control module, we already have wires that communicate with the SU. So we can use this wire as our signal wire for our relay. So if we track this one, which is yellow and blue. And this is going to be different if you have a four-wheel drive or a front-wheel drive. So be careful to look at the wiring diagram that match your car. So pin 15, 15, yellow and blue. So if we track it, we can see that this wire is usually on pin 38. So we are going to keep this in mind. And now if we look at our relay on the 2.5 SU, we can see that the wire goes to 20, 20, 14, 14, 93. So that's where the signal for the relay is coming from on the 2.5 SU. So what we can do is to move the wire yellow and blue that is on pin 38 to 33. So when the 2.5 SU wants to drive the fuel pump, it's going to send a ground and this ground is going to excite your fuel pump relay and you will be able to drive your fuel pump just like a stock 2.5 car too. And now after all of this, you have your 2.5 engine running, uh, the wiring is complete, everything is working as it should. 
Um, so it's really simple, match your T94, feed a 12 volt to the injector to um, the uh, T14A connector on pin 8. And then you have your signal for the fuel pump relay and you're good to go. But there's nothing else to do, this is all you need. So I hope that you found this video useful. If you do have some question, feel free to reach out, but please take in mind that I'm very busy and I may not have the time to give you some extensive explanation on how to do your swap. And everything you need to know is uh, on this video, you just have to rewatch it and listen carefully. Alright, have a good time with your swap and I hope this was useful.